Oma kind of multiple times failed um, uh, Tokyo gubernatorial candidate uh, Kenji and his name is uh, escaping me at the moment that I start to look at this but basically a former gubernatorial candidate has posted on change.org a petition on um, cancel the Tokyo Olympics to protect lives on the idea that basically it seems inevitable that with the um, uh, Utsunomiya Kenji that's right uh, lawyer communist party candidate but actually he's done quite well and he's quite a well-known labor rights uh, lawyer and advocate um, he has uh, 300, gathered 308,400 uh, signatures uh, online. I have, I have signed up to this myself. Just the fact that it is inevitable to me that um, it will, hosting the Olympics in the middle of what's clearly a, a still a critical and out of control uh, stage of the pandemic, uh, where the population is definitely not vaccinated, and not just in Tokyo, in rural areas as well. Um, the government insists that it's going to happen no matter what and that they're going to make it work by isolating athletes. They're not going to allow them to go and mix with the public. They're going to not have spectators, most likely. Um, so they're going to be minimizing interactions and whatnot. It is still unavoidable that there are going to be athletes that are going to bring it in. There are going to be athletes that are going to have it here and require hospitalization here. And there are going to be athletes that are just going to have normal Olympics type injuries and they're going to need hospital treatment. And the government's promised that they're going to give priority hospital treatment to athletes, be it for heat stroke or, you know, broken arms or COVID-19 over regular patients. And we have a situation I'm going to go into in more detail right now in Osaka where hospital beds are at maximum capacity and there are situations like elderly people's homes and homes for disabled people where there have been clusters and uh, they have not been able to put any of the people in critical conditions into hospitals there have been no beds available and those people have just died i mean basically it's a situation like delhi right now um in osaka that the medical system there is overwhelmed with cases so the idea that you've got a really fragile uh, system in Tokyo that is uh, currently managing, but, um, you know, is still at risk. And you're going to have tens of thousands of, uh, you know, athletes come in and, and staff for an international event. The notion that um, that is not going to cost, you know, at least one life <laughs> um, is unthinkable. And, and if it costs one life, then it's not worth it. This is the thing for me, you know, and, and the government is kind of blindly and arrogantly proceeding uh, on the assumption that, oh, no, they've got it under control. They'll make sure it won't, you know, uh, it, it won't affect. But whether it does directly, whether people catch it and die from catching it from visitors associated with the Olympics or whether people catch it and die from participating as volunteers or, you know, the, the sort of uh, interaction that will happen associated with the Olympics or whether it happens because someone can't get into a hospital because athletes were given priority to overstack hospitals uh, or doctors weren't available because they were volunteering to support the Olympics. To me, I don't see how it's going to happen that it's not going to, that the Olympics is not going to cause people who live in Tokyo and host towns to die. And if it's even just one people, one person, it's not worth it. And that's why I signed. I, I would love for Tokyo to host the Olympics, but I think you just have to pull the trigger and acknowledge it doesn't, you know, it, it's not appropriate. It's, uh, you know, it, it couldn't happen. Uh, it's it's shogunai. Uh, people have to acknowledge that. And I think forcing it through and the knowledge that it's going to result in loss of life is basically when you do something negligently, but it's foreseeable. You know, I mean, that's the definition of negligence with responsibility. Um, and, and particularly where that negligence involves loss of life. It's pretty crazy, and there are, there's a lot of discussion going on. Is this just, uh, you know, government paralyzed, unable, you know, nobody nobody wants to be the person that makes the decision. The IOC has all the, the sponsor money writing on it and the TV rights writing on it, so they don't want to cancel it. The, the national government doesn't want to cancel it because of national pride. Tokyo doesn't want to cancel it because they're worried that they're going to be stuck uh, with Tokyo taxpayers having to pay for all of the sort of lost money and so on. Um, but no one who's actually interested in... Um, public health is actually like in a decision-making position in any, anything around this. Um, and it's in that absence of somebody in an appropriate position to speak up for the people who are going to die, raising their hand that, you know, this is still going to happen. And it, it's going to happen. This is a thing. I, I, if By all logic, it should be stopped now. And the fact that it's not in this petition shows that there are a lot of people 
um, presumably uh, a lot mostly in Japan and Tokyo the, the the petition was only available in Japanese but just in a few days this has only been up for like three or four days now um, and it's garnered I, I think it got past 200,000 signatures within like 36 hours so yeah a lot of people agree with this and um, yeah butter <laughs> I saw that Sergeant Bilko um, yeah it's stupid so you know the, the link is there you can look for it online and it's uh, apparently changed all orgets the the most participated petition in japanese history uh for the site so that's the thing that's happening couldn't rank it and then afterwards all the athletes are going to go home what could go wrong well, exactly right and that and, and that's another way that it's going to cause loss of life and again if it just re results in one case um you know um, that causes long-term harm or death then it's not worth it uh, Dan H, the Japanese parliament doesn't have a government petition website. No, it does not. In UK, it does have one. And if there are 100,000 signatures, then it must be debated in parliament or responded to. Okay, I, I've seen those before. My sister posted those uh, occasionally. She lives in the UK. Um, she's very militant <laughs> about some issues. Uh, so I see those go. I didn't actually realize that that was a no, they definitely do not have that in Japan. And remember that based on the population, Japan has like uh, two and a half times the population of the UK. So I suppose the threshold would be to, should be two, 250,000 signatures for Japan, but no, they don't have anything like that. I mean, even a website, most websites run by the government cannot handle like three people looking at them sideways at the same time.